Hello students, welcome to lesson 29, session 4, Refine, Classifying Two-Dimensional Figures. Before we go any farther, I feel like we should probably uh, define polygon a little bit better because we're using that term quite a bit in our lessons. A polygon is a closed shape with straight sides. Rectangles, triangles, hexagons, and octagons are all examples of polygons. The word polygon comes from the Greeks, like most terms in geometry, which they invented. It simply means many, which is poly, angles, which is gone. A polygon can't have any curves or any gaps or openings in its shape. To start today, draw a Venn diagram or a tree diagram to classify these shapes. Parallelograms, rhombuses, polygons, and quadrilaterals. So pause the video and write down your answer and then pr pl press play again. So I'm gonna move the question up there so I have space to put my diagrams. I'm gonna start with the Venn diagram. The most general of those terms is polygons because all the others fit inside of polygons. They're all examples of polygons. So that one is the most general. Next, we have quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals are a type of polygon. And then parallelograms are more specific than that. All parallelograms are quadrilaterals because all parallelograms have four sides. Parallelograms are shapes that have two pairs of parallel sides. And then finally, rhombuses fit in all of those categories. Rhombuses are polygons with four sides, two pairs of parallel sides, and all sides are equal length. If we were to put this in a Venn di or yeah, a tree diagram, it would look like this. Polygons at the top, quadrilaterals next, then parallelograms, and finally rhombuses. Okay, here's an example. Hugo classified polygons based on properties of having exactly four sides and having all sides of equal length. Look at how Hugo placed three figures in a tree diagram. Draw a shape that belongs to both branches of the tree diagram. What is the name of the shape you drew? Now I already had that shape drawn, so I scribbled it out so you can't see what I drew. Go ahead and draw that shape in your book that is both a quadrilateral and an equilateral shape and then we'll see if yours matches mine. So I'm gonna uncover my shape here. And the shape that I have is, of course, a square. Squares are both quadrilaterals and they have equal sides. Number one, at the bottom of page 603, draw a Venn diagram or a tree diagram to show the relationships among quadrilaterals polygons, trapezoids, and hexagons. Then write a statement about the relationship between quadrilaterals and trapezoids. Show your work. At this point, please pause the video so you can do the work in your book and then press play. I am going to start with the Venn diagram. And out of these four terms, quadrilateral, polygon, trapezoid, and hexagon, the most general is polygon. All of those others are classified as polygons. So that's going to be my outside circle. Next, we have quadrilaterals, four-sided figures. And trapezoids are considered quadrilaterals because trapezoids have four sides. The last one we have is hexagons. Hexagons have six sides, so they cannot be part of the quadrilateral circle but hexagons are all polygons. So the hexagon circle will be inside of polygons, but it will not overlap with quadrilaterals. The tree diagram for this would look like this with polygons at the top. Quadrilaterals and hexagons are both examples of polygons. And then trapezoids goes under the quadrilateral category. Number two. Draw a Venn diagram or a tree diagram to show the relationships among these polygons. Pause the video, do your work, and then press play. So our three polygons are quadrilateral, 
which is a polygon with exactly four sides, trapezoid, quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides, and parallelogram, quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. So to do a Venn diagram, we'll start with quadrilateral, that's the most general category, and then we have parallelograms and trapezoids, which are both kinds of quadrilateral, but they don't overlap because parallelograms have two pairs of parallel sides, while trapezoids have exactly one pair of parallel sides. The tree diagram would start with quadrilateral, and then we have parallelograms over here and trapezoids over there. Number three. Look at the Venn diagram below. Which statement is true? So we're going to read through all of these statements and see if, if they make sense or not. And if they make sense, then we can put a little check next to it. And if they don't make sense, then we're going to cross it out. And by process of elimination, we should have our answer. So letter A. An equilateral triangle is always an isosceles triangle. So if we look at the circle where equilateral triangles is, it is entirely inside of isosceles triangles. Isosceles triangles have at least two sides that are the same length. And equilateral triangles have all three sides the same length. So all equilateral triangles are inside of isosceles. So we're going to put a check next to that one because that one does make sense. Well, let's check the others just to be sure. Letter B. An isosceles triangle is always an equilateral triangle. Well, there's all this space out here outside of the equilateral triangle circle that tells us that some isosceles triangles are not equilateral. That means that they only have two equal sides, but the third side is a different length. So that one we're going to get rid of. Letter C. Scalene and isosceles triangles share no attributes. Hmm. Well, scalene triangles are triangles that have three sides of different lengths. And isosceles triangles have at least two sides the same length. However, they are both inside of the circle triangles which means that they share the attribute of being triangles, and they both have three sides like triangles. So it is not true that they share no attributes, because they are both kinds of triangles. Letter D. The label inside the largest oval could be acute triangles. So that tells me that all these triangles in here would all be acute triangles. Well, I've seen triangles before that look like this. And this angle right here is obtuse. So that can't be true. So the correct answer here is A. And that's what we were thinking from the start. But it's good to check our other answers and make sure that we're confident. Brad chose B as the correct answer. Oh, poor Brad. How did he get that answer? Well, Brad thinks an isosceles triangle has all the attributes of an equilateral triangle. Maybe Brad just doesn't know his triangles. You better watch my videos and learn more. Okay, hey, number four is at the top of page 605. Draw a tree diagram to show the relationships among triangles, quadrilaterals, isosceles triangles, and polygons. So the top one is going to be the most general, and out of that list, polygons is the most general. And then under polygons, let's see, we have triangles, quadrilaterals, or isosceles triangles. So there's two kinds of triangles and then quadrilaterals. So we'll say quadrilaterals and triangles are two types of polygons. And then the last one that we have is isosceles triangles, which of course goes under the triangles section. 
Number five, use the diagram in problem four. Write two different statements that describe relationships among the shapes. So here's the diagram from problem four. I want you to pause and think of two statements that you can say or write down that describe the relationships among these shapes. Okay, some examples that you could put down. Isosceles triangles have all the properties that triangles have. All triangles and quadrilaterals are polygons. Number six. Could you add the two shapes below to your diagram in problem four? If so, where would you put them? Name each shape as you explain your thinking. So again, here is the tree diagram from problem four. Pause and see where you would put those shapes in the tree diagram or if you were would even be able to. Okay. You could add the pentagon to the diagram, but not the circle. And the pentagon would be another category under polygon. The pentagon is a polygon because it is a shape that has straight sides, no curves, and no gaps. The circle does not fit on our diagram because a circle is not a polygon. Circles are not polygons because they have curved sides. Number seven, solve for a Venn diagram to show how rhombuses and squares are related. He used arrows to label each region with properties of shapes inside that region. Part A, is Saul's Venn diagram correct? If not, what mistake did he make? And then part B, describe the relationship between rhombuses and squares. This is where you're going to pause and write down your answers and then press play. So for part A, no, his Venn diagram is not correct. Two pairs of parallel sides is also a property of squares. So this property should point to the region where the ovals overlap. The oval for squares should be completely inside the oval for rhombuses. There are no squares that are not rhombuses. So part B, describe the relationship between rhombuses and squares. Squares are a subcategory of rhombuses because squares have all the attributes of a rhombus. A square also has four right angles, but not all rhombuses have four right angles. So if you were to draw this correctly, squares would be a smaller oval completely inside of rhombuses. All squares are rhombuses, but not all rhombuses are squares. Number eight, math journal. A regular polygon has sides of equal length. Sammy says that all squares, equilateral triangles, and pentagons can be classified as regular polygons. Is Sammy correct? Draw a Venn diagram and explain your thinking. Pause and write down your work, then press play. No, Sammy is not correct. Squares and equilateral triangles are regular polygons because their sides all have equal length. A pentagon is any five-sided polygon. Only some pentagons are regular pentagons. So a Venn diagram would look like this. Here's my regular polygons. Regular polygons have all sides of equal length. All squares are regular polygons because one of the properties of squares is that they have four equal sides. All equilateral triangles are also regular polygons because equilateral triangles have three sides of equal length. However, only some pentagons are regular polygons because some pentagons look like this. All of the sides are equal. However, pentagons can also look like this. So no, Sammy was incorrect. Your assignment 
is to finish the Lesson 29 quiz. Have fun! I'll see you next time for Lesson 30.